A man died and went to heaven. He's at the pearly gates, met there by St. Peter, who then leads him down the golden streets. They walk by the mansion, beautiful, beautiful mansions, one after the other after the other, until they came to the end of the road, where they stopped in front of a little shack. Well, the man asked St. Peter why this little shack was his when there were so many mansions where he would be more comfortable. And St. Peter simply replied, well, I did the best with the money you sent us. <laughs> All kidding aside, now is the time to be thinking about your financial commitment to all of the excellent work and the missions of this congregation, from the hygiene pantry to the choir, to our work with partners of Wichita or Gammon Elementary, or your commitment to your professional clergy, all the work that Robin and I do on your behalf within the Wichita community. University Congregational Church will not flourish without your continued generous support. We do not pass the offering plate. There is an offering plate in the foyer for your gifts of, of money. Thank you, Josh and choir. Hope is my philosophy, just needs days in which to be. Can't argue with that. <clears throat> mm. 
white, a blank page or canvas, the challenge, bring order to the whole through design, composition, tension, balance, light, and harmony. These are the opening words of Stephen Sondheim's brilliant theater piece, Sunday in the Park with George, where he meditates upon this idea of creativity, what it is, where does it come from, and what it does for us in our lives. This morning, we will take a look at how we heal our spirits through the art that we enjoy. We're going to also look at the community that is created through art. Our traditional word for this morning comes from the Hebrew Bible. The Holy One has filled them with skill to do every kind of work done by an artisan or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns and in fine linen or by a weaver, by any sort of artisan or skilled designer. And our contemporary word is an essay by the brilliant activist Audre Lorde. For the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. They may allow us to temporarily beat him at his own game, but they will never enable us to bring about genuine change. Audre Lorde is telling us that we will never get ourselves out of our messes and our conflicts by using the same tools we use that got us into the mess. We're going to have to use other forms, other ways, art, poetry, song, conversations about our dreams for each other. We are not going to build the beloved community by the policies and the procedures and by whatever we've done in the past. We know that God's justice is going to require a different way of thinking and being in our world. We will have to use our creative imagination to partner with the Holy One and recreate our world. My creative partner for this morning is my friend Terry Mott. Terry's been involved in the Wichita art scene in many different contexts throughout her career. She was the assistant director of City Arts in the early 2000s. She worked with the uh, Tallgrass Film Festival for many years, bringing those brilliant independent movies to Wichita. She runs her own events and promotions agency. She's the owner and creative consultant for Mojo Events. She's also currently the director of marketing and communication for Wichita Festivals, which just concluded its latest event, the Wichita River Festival. I'm surprised that she had the energy to be here this morning. I'm delighted to have her with us for a conversation. Please help me welcome Terry Mott. So I can't tell you how excited I am for this conversation. We've known each other quite a long time. Tell me a little bit about you, yourself. Oh, gosh. Um, well, as you mentioned, I work at Wichita Festival, so I'm involved in giant event planning. That's my focus of my life right now, but uh, I'm, I'm a lot of other things, too. I'm an actress who's performed most of my life. Um, I am an art fan. I'm a collector of paintings, mostly. I'm also a, a very blessed wife. My husband happens to be a painter. My, my life is filled with art and has been since I was born. My mother is also a painter, Paul. I'm very touched by the piece and your story about your mom. It means a lot to be raised with art. That's had a big influence on my life. Absolutely, I remember one of my very first albums my mom bought me was the movie soundtrack of Fiddler, Fiddler on the Roof. And we all know what that <laughs> led to for me. We've all been paying for that ever since, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually did the bottle dance back in the 90s, and I have the horrible review to prove it. All right. So how do we know each other? We have, boy, I tried to think 
about that. We actually have a lot of connections. We have a lot of friends in common, um, which is amazing. That's probably the best part of my life is my huge, huge group of friends. Yeah. I've been very blessed that way. Um, thank you. Oh. Uh -oh. I can't imagine. Technical problems at University Church? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. He'll, they'll get it fired up. Is it push, push up and it should fire up in just a second? Yeah. Anything? Can you hear me? He's, he's almost there. He's almost there. Well, he's getting that set up. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite contexts, this is from in the 80s, uh, and I can neither confirm nor deny that I spent a lot of time at Kirby's Beer Store, but there is a, there is a community of friends that um, kind of generated, that was the germ of where we would meet and got to know each other as well, but we've done shows together, uh, and we run in a lot of similar um, circles. What are some of your thoughts on community? Uh, that's a big question. <laughs> that is a really big question, Paul. I, community can mean so many things. I'll just speak louder. Can you hear me? Okay, okay great. great. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, to me, community is, of course, the place you live, mm -hmm. which I feel a great affection for. I love Wichita. I spent a lot of time in my youth planning how to get the heck out of Wichita. And then I grew up and did that, lived in New York City for a while. I loved it. I learned so much. And the main thing I learned is how much I loved my home and how much potential it had in terms of events and art and all of the things. It, it wasn't that things like that weren't happening, but we didn't have a giant reputation for being exciting in terms of a place to live for young people. So uh, when I came back to town, a lot of us kind of went, hey, let's do some cool stuff. And many people did. Yep. So I've been lucky to work with a lot of folks that started exciting things like Tallgrass Film Festival and uh, oh, Final Fridays, all of those kinds of things that had happened, now First Fridays in the downtown area. But that's one kind of community. But also, I'm lucky to be part of many communities that tie me together with a, gr with a beautiful, graceful, wonderful group of people that bring me love and that I can share love with, friends. And it's important for me because my family does not live here. They live on the East Coast, and I, I don't get to see them very often, so my community is my family. As you know, we've spent holidays together, and uh, that's often true. My Thanksgivings and my Christmases are often spent with my community of friends and fellow artists and so on. And we were talking also about how art heals our soul. Um, I haven't performed in quite a while, and Karen Robb is in the middle of her doctoral uh, work at Phillips. I'm in the same program that she is. She's towards the end and actually doing her final dissertation project work, and it's a play. And she asked me if I would perform a role, and I missed the first two rehearsals due to, due to mom's death. But I joined the, the company on Thursday night, and Friday night, when I left the, the space that we were rehearsing in, I was happy for the first time in a long time. Performing fills a need that I have in my spirit. I understand that very much. I, as we were ju I just revealed to Paul, we've known each other, I don't know, 30 years? When we were 10? Really? Yes, we met when we were children. <laughs> um, and he doesn't, didn't know till today that I'm actually an introvert, and this is terrifying for me. It is, and performing on stage is terrifying for me, but if I don't do it, I'm sad, because it's fundamentally who I am, and I love it, and I gain so much from it. And uh, traditionally, after Riverfest, we are all so exhausted that we really just don't even want to do anything or see people or anything for a while. You just have to mentally regroup and get that rest. It's a very, very challenging thing to do physically and emotionally. And uh, actually, the day after we completed this festival, I received a friend who is a producer and director, and she needed to replace a character in the show. So I'm thrilled to say that I'll get to be in Rocky Horror Show at the Crown Uptown 
And uh, all my friends are like, are you insane? <laughs> How can you do that? But actually, it's so energizing for me, and I cannot wait to get to rehearsals. It just brings such joy to me, and that uh, energy that you receive from the audience, there's nothing like that. There isn't. Nothing. Uh, being involved in a theatrical production is, is a, a fascinating way to look at community because you create this small company or a small community mm -hmm. for the duration of that. Temporary community, yeah, family, and, for sure. And, but then it dissolves and then they go off and do other projects. And, and so um, one of the things that has always drawn me to you and your spirit, though, is uh, there's a positivity to you. There's a, a can-do spirit. Um, there is a, always a forward-moving energy with Terry. How do you replenish that? That because it's got to be exhausting. You know, I'm really bad at it, actually. But I try. I this sounds corny, but I just try to always come from a place of love. And when I was a younger person, I had a harder time doing that. But the older I get, the more I see how beneficial that is for other people and myself. So that's part of it, but also they're just things I do that make me happy. Like, I love clothing that's bright and beautiful, so I wear a lot of colors. It's my costuming, really, for each day, and uh, I really fall back on a lot of acting skills, too, because sometimes it's not about replenishing, but really presenting a face that maybe I don't feel in my heart. But even doing that and having people respond in a positive way is affirming and then comes back to me, if that makes sense. Absolutely. But uh, you know all the other good stuff too. People should take vacations. I'm really bad at it, <laughs> but gosh, I hope they will. <laughs> Just uh, make sure you uh, don't drive into any deer when you take a vacation <laughs> and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's a bad thing. So, you know, I wasn't gonna ask you about this, but tell us a little bit about your husband and his work. Sure, oh, I'm happy to talk, I'm so proud of him. He is... Uh, What's his name? His name is Richard, Richard Davies. He's a painter, an oil painter, and uh, he really excels at portraits, but does beautiful um, urban landscapes, so some beautiful paintings of Wichita. Uh, you may have seen his work, but uh, the thing that is special to me, well, there's many special things about him, but he and I support each other's love of the arts, not just the appreciation of others, work, but our own vision and what we need to do. He knows I need to perform to be happy, and so he's very supportive of that. He runs, he runs lines with me, and every, I mean, I couldn't do it without him, seriously. Awesome. He cooks meals for me so that I can make it from my demanding job to rehearsal and that kind of thing. And I, in turn, support him as well. Um, he, we both were married a first time, which we both made some questionable choices, and that's okay. Our lives are better, and uh, we're better people ourselves. And uh, part of it was we both needed that support. He needed the support of someone who believed in him as an artist, and that that was something he had to do to be his complete self. And so it's something special we share. It's, it's why we're, we have such a strong marriage, I think. It's great art, and if you've never seen it, go on Facebook, look up his page, and you can see some pieces there, and it's all, all around town as well. So this is the, this is the big question. Uh-oh. How can we change the world through art? Uh, uh, that's a good question. I'd say just by participating in it. As you said, experiencing art helps you connect with your genuine self and communicate with other people. Not everybody's comfortable talking openly about their feelings. I'm not always. And so for me, performing as another character is a way I do that. But my husband does it by painting beautiful paintings and others do it with dance and writing and so on. I, I think that is the thing, to, to embrace the artist in yourself most people, I've heard so many people say, well, I'm not an artist, but I don't think that's true. Really, art is just about the expression of what's inside you, and we all have things to share. We all do, and it feels good to share them. I think you don't have to show them to anybody, really. You could write things and never share them if that's what you feel comfortable doing, but I, even that, I've taken that action, too, and it feels very 
liberating. Neat. I've always considered Terry a bit of a renaissance woman, and I think you can see why. Would you please thank Terry for being here today? Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. I enjoy you.